I've been an engineer and a, and an environmental geologist for 30 years in consulting, and uh, chanced upon a medicine wheel, a Native American medicine wheel, in 2003. Um, and I was interested from an engineering and geology standpoint, a number of, number of things. Who built the medicine wheel? Why did they build it where they did? It was in the mountains at over 10,500 feet, which is a strange location to be constructing anything in that, in that difficult environment. And what did the symbolism mean, the geometry of this medicine wheel? Um, it was the geometry and understanding that in particular that led me to realize the sacred uh, symbolism of that structure and from there it just carried on to understanding architecture and why sacred buildings and monuments and and certainly the megalithic monuments that led me to start looking at them and uh, and studying them compared to uh, symbols uh, either written or you know smaller structures that man has created for thousands and thousands of years as sacred symbols so, Medicine wheels constructed by Native Americans uh, generally are composed of cobbles and boulders, uh, and when there's a circle involved, they it is a complete circle. So each stone is touching another, typically, and in addition to a circle, there will be uh, diameter lines or, or radiuses, a central cairn oftentimes, and there may be lines or spokes that are running outside of the circle as well. So there can be various different combinations of, of uh, features related to Native American medicine wheels. Uh, whereas uh, in Britain you find many medicine wheels that uh, you, uh, with variable number of stones, but they're megalithic oftentimes, <clears throat> sometimes not but they're individual standalone stones. Uh, what I find is the symbolism is very much the same. So it's a culturally uh, people have idiosyncrasies and they, they present a symbol as representing sacred, uh, sacred concepts in slightly different ways, but, they, but the concept itself is the same. The Cloud Peak Medicine Wheel in Wyoming is is about six to seven feet in diameter and constructed of, of gravel and, and, and cobbles and a couple of boulders. But it's very small, but it is perfectly circular and has a cairn in the middle of it compared to uh, structures here in Britain where, this, where the, oftentimes the rocks are megalithic in size and standing straight up and, and you can notice them from a distance. And the, so that's quite a, quite a difference in the two. These ancient symbols constructed as medicine wheels or uh, stone circles leading to megalithic structures are vitally important to, in some fashion, to virtually every culture around the world throughout time. And the architecture, even in a, a, a small medicine wheel, uh, is, is as important as a large megalithic structure because they're representing the same concepts for a certain people. Some people like to have the intimacy of a small structure. Uh, when you look at a, at a wider culture, a wider, larger population, the structure may be larger so that it's viewable and recognized by the society in general. Indian medicine wheels are small because it's an intimate, a direct experience for the individual but other structures obviously such as the Great Pyramid is going to be rep representative of the culture in general and, and is making a wider statement. But, there, but the, the concepts behind both are the same. There's no doubt that megalithic structures are constructed using m megalithic components in order to make them last. Uh, understanding that it's not going to be eternal but having them last as long as possible uh, because oftentimes these structures are going to resonate with not only the generation that constructed them but for generations to come and with that general understanding the structures are constructed accordingly and the architecture, the symbolism uh, and the materials themselves are representative of something that every generation can relate to and recognize through the symbolism. 
the technology used for megalithic structures, moving the stones uh, uh, after quarrying them, getting them transported to the location, cutting them and setting them in place in, in various megalithic structures is an open question. No good answer in, in, in every case. Is it um, related to uh, metaphysics? Is there something that the ancients knew that we don't know or we can't realize through energy or manifest in some way? There's possibilities. I, I tend to say everything is possible, few things are probable. To the best of our knowledge, these metaphysical ways are possible, but there's no evidence that there, there's a good probability of them. At the same time, we still don't have an answer from a scientific standpoint or from a practical standpoint how they would construct these megalithic structures. So uh, I don't have a pin, an opinion on that. I'm kind of open to however they're constructed. The cosmos in general is very important to ancient and indigenous peoples, and it remains that way for indigenous people. We, we live in a, a culture now that is electrified. We have lights at night, and the ancient ones didn't have that. So once the sun was down, it was dark, and you had 12 hours a day to look up at the stars and the planets and notice what was going on in the sky. So no doubt there was more attention to what was going on in the sky and uh, attempting to relate what was above with what was below in, in the context of living on this on this earth. So there's you know there's every reason to believe that they were paying attention to this and realizing concepts uh, without writing them down but realizing them and passing them on verbally that that we have a difficult time with today. The difficulty I see with archaeology uh, is there's data to be obtained from the subsurface regarding cultural activities in the past. But it's very difficult to use that data to find concrete uh, reasons for why you are, you're encountering certain things in, in, in the subsurface as indications uh, concretely of how a culture uh, acted and what, what their daily lives were about. There are assumptions that go into that, unfortunately. And archaeology needs, in my opinion, additional sciences in combination in order to create a real, reasonable scenario uh, justifying what is encountered in the subsurface. Archaeology can't do it on its own. It's more of a uh, finding the evidence rather than being able to concretely uh, you know, make a, draw a conclusion from the evidence that they've obtained. The, the energies that we find being emitted from the Earth or from the cosmos that we interact uh, with here on Earth, whether they're ley lines or, or otherwise, uh, I believe are actually to be encountered virtually anywhere at any time. Uh, so, so these energies are, are available to us in ways that we can comprehend them. So if we're looking for ley lines, we will find ley lines. If we're looking for energies in them, we will find them. If I'm a hundred miles away from any ley line, but I still have this belief and this connection with universe and, and, and energy and what it can do for me positively in my life and for the universe, I believe that that energy is there and it will, it will be made manifest in some fashion within my life because that's the universe I've, I've created. I can connect with it without being along those ley lines. Uh, having said that, still uh, human beings create symbols, we create things that can help us make that connection. And so whether they're in circular form or in straight lines or whether we believe that we need circles or we need straight lines, it's having that positive attitude that we can make that connection that's, that's important. That's, that's the vital uh, characteristic of being able to make that connection and derive those energies for a positive use. There is very little information on Native American medicine wheels. Uh, one of those reasons is, be, is because there are so few of them. Many of them have been destroyed by plowing 
and uh, making use of the land uh, from an agricultural standpoint. So uh, in North America, there are maybe 70 of them, and many of them are not in pristine condition. They've been uh, impacted in some fashion. So uh, the, the purpose, the location, the, the functioning of them uh, with a particular intent by a certain tribe remains generally unknown to the wider population, although certain individuals, elders in, in certain tribes, may have a better understanding of the reason for, for medicine wheels and why they are designed the way they are representing some particular concept or need of, of the culture. Um, but there's very little information to go on. There are a number of sacred sites associated with native people in North America. Uh, but they generally, I would say, are not as valued as, as similar sacred sites in other parts of the world. Uh, that, that has just been the, the attitude that's, that was taken when Europeans first came to North America and it continues as Americans that we have our own culture, we have our own needs, and, and there's very little interest in prehistory, pre-Columbian history. But that is slowly changing and people are recognizing megalithic structures in North America and these other smaller sacred sites. And so there's, there's a, an energy that's building to, uh, to provide better uh, um, communications and interest in these, in these sites so that uh, they can be better protected than they have been in the past. In 2003, I dis I encountered a medicine wheel in the Bighorn Mountains of Wyoming. And as soon as I saw it before me, it was um, ex an extremely powerful e experience. And I, I, it changed my life immediately. And, uh, and I, again, I wondered what the purpose of that medicine wheel, wheel was where I was encountering it at over 10,000 feet in elevation. Subsequently, I visited the site uh, two more times and it is a powerful experience it's a very sacred experience when I enter the valley where this particular medicine wheel is located again at such an elevation this medicine wheel is is um, only available to be seen two maybe three months out of the year otherwise it's covered in snow so it's 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 a formidable uh, um, it challenge to get to the medicine wheel site in the first place. But if you can get there, as I have, and recognize this, the sacred nature of the, the site, it's just overwhelming. I'm not f uh, familiar with any particular energies that are emanating or can be detected from medicine wheels in North America. That doesn't mean that there aren't any, but there's very little uh, investigation that's being done to evaluate them. There are many sacred sites in North America where energies have been noted and recorded, but not necessarily associated with medicine wheels. At the same time, if you're not looking for it, you, you may not see it. But if you can be open to it, open your mind and your heart to the, that possibility and study, study them with that frame of mind, one may very well more easily recognize that there are powers, there are hidden powers, hidden energies that can be tapped. The most important finding uh, regarding this medicine wheel in Wyoming that I've written about is that the geometry of that structure is representative of a specific spherical geometry that all circular symbols around the world and throughout time also represent. The, all of the, these various geometries of these circular symbols are two-dimensional facets of a specific three-dimensional um, structure, a geometry composed of nine great circles in a very specific pattern. The unusual or very surprising thing to me is that this specific ge geometry may very well represent the geometry of the universe itself. There's a, there's a very good possibility, if not probability, that that is the case. And recently, it looks like, based on, on the work on uh, subatomic particles, that they are 
uh, very minute but representative uh, of the very same geometry. So it looks like at all scales this specific geometry is fundamental and important to the universe and it happens that mankind has recognized that in some way that it has yet to be explained but it is a phenomenal thing if that's indeed true that, that's going to indicate that uh, that you and me and everything that we utilize in our life and ever have experiences with our energies operating with that very same the very same geometry and that is that's astounding that's a slap in the face i couldn't believe it when i first realized that the ancients were very interested in their relationship with each other the earth the cosmos and the creator however they envisioned the creator and however they would possibly be able to interact with with that energy that's found throughout the universe of course we want to answer the same questions but they were far more in tune it appears with those energies and interested in those relationships and the unity that there is within the universe and how that is applicable to the, the human condition that is what they appear to have left as a legacy for us to realize and for us to return to uh, in the future.